me call your attention uh, this afternoon to the book of Ephesians, the second chapter. And while you find that, let me take an opportunity to thank Pastor Shepherd for yet another chance to stand behind the sacred desk and minister the word of God. We appreciate our pastor. Amen. And I was listening to Sister Richards uh, a moment ago. And oh, Sister Richards, I know it is a sinking feeling when someone steals your car. Hey, my goodness, I went through that. And uh, that was just, eesh. it's not a, not a, a good feeling. Amen. But God. Amen. He's still in control. Amen. Amen. And, you know, the scriptures, you know what the scripture says uh, about what the devil meant for evil. And God always turns it around for our good. Amen. Uh, second chapter of the book of Ephesians. Begin reading at the very first verse. And the word of the Lord is so recorded. And you has he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversations in time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Amen. By the grace of God, uh, for just a little while this morning, I want to uh, encourage you from this thought. Get up and walk in righteousness. Get up and walk in righteousness. Let's go before the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord God, for your people that have gathered to hear your word. And God, except you speak, I don't know what we'll do. I pray, God, that you anoint these lips of clay, that they might speak your word. Let all flesh be silent, and let your spirit be glorified in this place. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, the Apostle Paul wrote here to the church at Ephesus. And um, ver chapter number two is really a continuation of the first chapter. Some writers even say that this chapter two uh, shouldn't have a, a, a pause there. That, that should be just one big chapter but uh, because it, it's, it goes together. Um, if you catch the last two verses of chapter one, he says, and has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Talking about Jesus. And then in chapter 2, he goes on to talk about how he has quickened us who were dead in trespasses and sin. And When the Bible says that he quickened us, it means that he raised us up because we were dead in trespasses and sin. We were inactive 
in respect to doing right. We were destitute of the force or the power to do right because of trespasses and sin. We couldn't, we couldn't help ourselves. We were buried by it. It controlled us. It had power over us. And by all accounts, we deserve to die. Amen? But God intervened on our behalf. And those of us who accepted him, who were once dead, we are now made alive. And because we are made alive, because he has quickened us, we ought to get up out of our trespasses and our sins. The problem is some of us have been there so long that we're stuck in them. But we as the body of Christ needs to get up and realize who we are and realize that sin doesn't control us. Amen. That it has no power over us. And Jesus died to make that so. And so we couldn't, have, we couldn't do right. That's what the scripture says. We didn't have the ability to do right because of trespasses and sins. And, you know, I believe that every word in the Bible is there for a reason. And I took note that he stated trespasses and sins. And so <laughs> the word trespasses from the original Greek, it means to sidestep or to fall beside uh, a lapse or a deviation from the truth and righteousness. And sin, we've heard pastor give this definition many times, literally means to miss the mark, uh, to wander from the law of God. And one writer was trying to paint the picture, you know, as, as trespasses as being kind of like a casual sin. You trespass. You, 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 it's, a, it, it's a casual sin. A little sin, they call it. And then sin is the big one. That's the whopper. That's when you really mess up. But the Bible says that all unrighteousness is sin. Amen? And it's, it's that little, the little nuance there when we try to categorize sin that gets us in trouble. All unrighteousness is sin. And we live in a world today where people don't want to acknowledge sin. Uh, they, they are, they are cha- trying to at least change the course of history and things that were sin since the eons of time. They are now saying it's not sin anymore. But you see, we can't follow the world. Am I talking to anybody in here? We can't follow because the world has his own agenda. It has his own definition. And that's why God has called us out of the world. And when we receive the Lord Jesus Christ, we have an obligation to make a change. We have an obligation to no longer follow the deeds of the world. And so Paul here talks about In the second verse, he says, where in time past, we walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. In times past. Okay, that lets me know right there that when we come to Christ, there has to be a change in our past. Our future and our past don't look the same. Am I talking to anybody? You can't just name the name of Jesus without having some sort of transformation. But we live in a world now where people name the name of Jesus and they don't make, they're the same person they were before they came in contact with him. Some of them even, you know, they've even gone and 
gone through the motions. Yeah, I, I, one, uh, <laughs> heard one person say it like this. You know, they get baptized. They go down a dry devil and come up a wet devil. Because nothing changes. Am I talking to anybody? We have to get to the point, saints of God, where we, we are excited about being different. God has called us to be different from the world. And we ought to be excited and we ought to embrace that difference. We are not like the world. We're not a part of the world. Everything about us is difference. It's time out for us as the body of Christ placating our friends and our families and appeasing them and trying to make them comfortable with our salvation and the person who God has called us to be. It's time out for that. If they're uncomfortable with who you are in the Lord, so be it. That's not your problem. That's their problem. You got to do what God has called you to do. He's called you to be different. The scripture says in one place, come out from among them and be ye separate. And I like what he does. He says, we've all been there. Amongst whom also, we all have had our conversations in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. We've all been there. And some of us get to the point where we forget where we've come from. We forget where God had to, had to deliver us from. That's when you find folks turning their nose up at folks that walk in church. That's when you find folks looking at folks side eye because they, they have on a, a, a certain type of outfit or, or they don't you know, meet what they think the requirement is. All of us were at some point and some time in our lives distant from God. And you didn't save yourself. Am I talking to anybody? That's why the Bible said by grace are you saved. Through faith. It wasn't nothing that you did that you are so good. And we have to be mindful of that when we're interacting with folks. When we see folks who are not where they should be in God. Now, that doesn't mean that we accept anything. We don't embrace sin. Today, it's hard to find preachers who preach about sin. Everybody wants to tell you how much God loves you. How much God wants to bless you. How much money God can give you. Oh, if you just give to God, God will multiply you and God will do this. All those things may be true. He desires for you to be blessed. He desires for you, uh, as the scripture says, give and it shall be given back to you. God wants to see you blessed. But above all things, we've got to be holy. We've got to be holy. And that means that we have to abstain from sin. Hardly do you find preachers this day and age preaching about sin. People don't want to hear about sin. People want to hear how good God's going to bless them. Prosperity. New cars. Bigger jobs. More money. None of that stuff is going to get you to heaven. The Bible says it's going to pass away with a fervent heat. So don't put stock in those things. Don't put stock in these temporal things. We've got to get a hold to what's righteous. Because God has pulled us out of what, what, what was the depth of hell. We were dead in trespasses and sin. And my God, when you're alive, you ought to act like you're alive. If you were dead in trespasses and sin and now you're alive in Jesus Christ, we ought to act like we're alive in Jesus Christ. We ought to be excited about being the church. We ought to be bragging and boasting on the God that saved us. We should have the biggest mouths in the marketplace. We should have the biggest mouth on the job. We should have the biggest mouths wherever we go. We should have the, the biggest, we should have a bullhorn for Jesus. 
Everybody that comes in contact with us needs to hear our testimony, needs to hear how we got to where we are. When was the last time you told someone your testimony? Think about it. When was the last time you had a conversation with someone and told them about how God saved you? About how God delivered you? They would be surprised to hear what you used to be. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. That means you got to tell somebody. If you're excited about what God did in your life, you ought to be telling somebody. You ought to show some sign. Are you glad to be saved? Are you excited about the Holy Ghost? Amen. Do you have joy in your heart? Do you walk around excited just to be alive? Or do we walk around moping and groping like we got nothing? You are no longer dead in trespasses and sin. You are now alive. You are quickened, as the Bible said. If you are quickened and you are alive, then you ought to be able to give him a praise every once in a while. You ought to be able to shout hallelujah every once in a while if you're alive. And we all have this struggle. There's a battle between the vice and the virtue. The vice, that one thing that holds you back. Everybody has one or has had one. That one thing that keeps you from getting over the top. And there you are in the middle trying to deal with the vice and still hold on to virtue. And I submit to you that when you get a hold of virtue, when you get a hold of the truth of God, and you really go after being a virtuous child of God, the vice will fall off. The vice, the vice can't hold you. Why? Because he's already delivered you from trespasses and sins. I thought y'all would be a little bit more excited about that. Good to see Sister Latyra. She's back. Her mother passed away, and it's good to have her back in service. Amen. <laughs> but then, then, then Paul goes on to say this. He says, we are his workmanship. We are his workmanship. But the verse before that says, you are saved by grace. Through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. We have too many people walking around with microphones talking about their wealth and what they have and what they all got in the name of God. And not enough people with microphones preaching folks out of hell. Preaching to folks about living righteous. Which is the point I'm trying to get across tonight. Get up and start walking in righteousness. God has called us. He has brought us out. We were dead in trespasses and sin. Anybody ever seen a dead man get up? Some folks, and they don't want to. But can you just imagine someone, imagine Lazarus. Can you imagine what life was like for him after he tasted death and God called him out of the grave? Can you imagine the testimony he had? I could be off on this. But I don't think he was quiet about it. I, I, don't think he, I don't think he kept that to himself. It wasn't any secret anyway. But I can imagine him telling everybody what happened in his life. I was dead and now I'm alive. We were dead in trespasses and sins. We didn't have power to live right. We didn't have the power or the ability to do right. 
but Jesus died. And somebody said he nailed our sins to the cross. And it freed us. And it gave us the ability. The Bible says it quickened us. You has he quickened who was dead, were dead in trespasses and sin. And since he has quickened you, you ought to get up and start walking in righteousness. And not be ashamed of it. It's time for the church to be the church. And I think these days we've gotten to a place where we try to make folks comfortable in our efforts not to offend. We don't want to offend everybody, anyone. But I've got to tell you the truth. You can't just name the name of Jesus and live any kind of way. You've got to be righteous. You've got to walk in righteousness. You've got to walk in holiness. It's got to be a part of your daily life. Not sometimes. Until they make you mad. We are his workmanship. What does that mean? I didn't do this, Brother Peter. Huh? You, you didn't save yourself, Brother Bruce. With love and kindness, he drew us. And he called us unto him. And he saved us and delivered us. And we ought to be eternally grateful to him. That he looked beyond all of our faults. And he saw how much he ne we needed us. We needed him. And then he blessed us with his spirit. Who glory. The Bible calls the Holy Ghost the earnest of our expectations. It's, it's, it literally means that the Holy Ghost is a down payment on what's to come. And if you've ever been caught up in the spirit of God, if you've ever been, I mean, overshadowed with the power of the Holy Ghost, you're talking about joy? That's joy. I'm talking about when you got out of yourself and you got out of your flesh and you allow the Holy Ghost to have his way and you're crying and you're calling on them. That's pure joy. That's heavenly joy. But you, you know what you know that feels? Anybody know what that feels like? That'll make you run around the church. That'll make you shout. That'll make you jump. And the Bible says that's only a down payment. That's the earnest of our inheritance. Oh, glory. He, we are his workmanship. What does that mean also? It also means that, Brother Wilson, he's not done with me. He's, he's still working things out of my life. Wait. But because God is still working on me, that can't be a crutch for us. Huh? We'll, we'll curse somebody out in a heartbeat and say, oh, God's still working on me. No, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> I, hope, I hope we won't cuss anybody out. Nobody would do that, will we? Would we? No. Oh, some of us will lose our cool. Huh? Some of us will lose, we'll lose our cool. But that, that, that makes you human. That makes you human. But we are his workmanship. God is still working on us. And he will be continually working on us until Jesus comes. But we can't use the fact that he's still working on us as an excuse to do things contrary to his will. That's called taking the grace of God for granted. And we can't take God's grace for granted. He asked the question. Should sin abound? Hmm? He said well, where sin abound, grace does much more abound. But that doesn't mean that we should go out continually sinning. We have to walk in righteousness daily. 
Am I talking to anybody? We're in such a place in our society, and I'm just going to just call a spade a spade. We, 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 the church, it, it, it irks me. It gets under my skin when I see saints of God. Let me say this first. When you are his workmanship, everything you do and everything you say is an extension of your relationship with God. Amen? What you post on social media is an extension of your relationship with God. You can't post all kind of garbage on social media and then come in church and be wholly sanctified because that's an extension of you. So, so if we're talking about walking in righteousness and you've got a platform, you know, why not use that platform to share the goodness of the Lord? Keep your political views to yourself. We got folks hating each other over two people who don't even know you. They don't even know your name. And you know what's going to happen? In November... We're going to have a president. Who? No idea. But you know what's going to happen? He's going to be president for four years. And you know what's going to happen? We're going to have another president. And that's going to be the cycle until the Lord comes back. So why am I going to hate you for something temporary? We're focusing on the wrong thing. God didn't call us to fight each other on social media over political issues. We are the church. We have to start acting like the church. It just gets under my skin that saints of God are fighting each other over political issues. Like you planned on staying here. We didn't come here to stay. This is just a temporary lodging for us. Let the world be the world. Let's be the church. Our purpose and our goal should be trying to share and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to everyone we come in contact with. And we only do that by getting up and walking in righteousness. You were dead in trespasses and sins. And he has quickened you. He's made you alive through his death on the cross. That ought to be enough to make you excited. That ought to be enough to make you praise him and give his name glory. I don't have time to fight with somebody over someone who don't even know me. My wife and I were in Puerto Rico a few weeks ago, and we met a lady. And uh, we began to talk with this lady for a little bit, and I'm almost done. And I thought it was, it was kind of like the highlight of my, my trip. And so it's just, it's just funny how, how, you know, God puts people in, y- in your space. And so we're, 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 we were getting on the elevator, and... Uh, there was a uh, husband and a wife and two, two girls. And the, uh, 
the young lady had on a shirt with the A on it. And I, you know me, I'm like, hey, roll tie. I said, hey, roll tie. She said, where are you from? I said, we're from Alabama too. She said, I said, where are you from? She said, well, we're from Tuscaloosa. I said, oh, really? So we, we, we said our pleasantries and went on about our business. Next morning, my wife and I go to breakfast, and there's a lady sitting at the table by herself. And we stopped and chat for a moment. And I said, well, where's your husband? She said, oh, he, he had to go. He had to go back to work. I said, oh, really? W what does he do? Oh, he's a pilot. He had to fly back. We just hopped a ride, and we are just on vacation while he's going back flying. Well, awesome. We got to talking, and uh, we talked to this lady for almost four hours. We ended up sitting down with her and talking for four hours. And she said, uh, I said, well, what do you do? She said, I'm a, I'm a journalist. And uh, I said, well, really? She said, well, well I said, well, how did you, you know, I said, well, we talked a little bit about journalism or whatever. And she said, yeah, I, I graduated from Alabama, and I, I went to uh, Yale, and uh, I went to work in Chicago for the Chicago Tribune, and nobody would talk to me because I was new, and nobody would, uh, you know, give me any, inf any information. I, so I had a hard time getting stories and whatnot. And she said, but there was this one guy who was kind of a savvy politician, and he would give me stories, and we became friends. And fast forward, some years later, that guy, her friend, became the president of the United States. His name was Barack Obama. And so she ended up covering his campaign. And she had his number in her phone. I'm like, how cool is that? She knows Barack Obama. You think that gets me any closer to heaven? Because I know someone who knows Barack Obama? No. Does that, does that, does that do, what, what does it do for us? When we bury ourselves in these worldly issues. And we allow the worldly issues to cause us to be separated. Saints of God, we have got to start walking in righteousness. It's not about who you know, how much money you have. It's about what kind of life you live. The Bible says we are walking epistles. Being read of men every day. We have a mandate from Jesus Christ to go and preach the gospel to every creature. We can't do that if we're not walking in righteousness. We have, first of all, got to be excited about the fact that we are no longer dead in trespasses and sin. Does that mean you're not going to make mistakes? No. That're why he went on later to say you're, work, you're his workmanship. In other words, don't get so big to think that you're so holy that you did it by yourself. It's by the grace of God that we are saved. But I want to tell you, saints of God, you can live holy. You can live a holy life. You can live a righteous life. You are no longer bound by what the Bible calls him the prince of the air. And guess who he's controlling? Second verse says this. Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Just like he said that we are Christ's worksmanship, the spirit of the prince of the air is working in the children of disobedience. So when they come against you, saints of God, you got to have enough wisdom and enough godly understanding 
and enough discernment to realize that it's the spirit that's motivating them. It's the spirit of the prince of the air that's trying, that's causing them to come against you. Whew. Let's all stand together. I want to encourage you. To walk in righteousness. We are the church of the living God. As the song my, my daughter said, the church is when the church comes alive. When the church comes alive, walls are broken. When the church comes alive. I, 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 God, I, I pray that we get back to that day. That, that, I grew up in a time, man, where people were just crazy about going to church. We went to church literally. <laughs> and when you talk about revivals, they had revivals back then two and three weeks. I'm not joking. Revivals lasted two and three weeks. And Sister Janie McClary wasn't going to miss a night. And guess what? She wasn't going by herself. Huh? Because, you know, we went to church. Where, where, we, where we went to church was called Over the River. She wasn't going over that river by herself. Huh? It didn't matter that you had school. See, kids, these days, they, they're, they're small. You know, we got school. It's a school night. It didn't matter back then. School night or no school night. You were going to be in church. Let's walk in righteousness. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. I pray, God, that you help us tonight, Lord God. I pray, God, that your word, God, lands on our heart, God. I pray, God, that you help us, Father, to just... Give us that desire, Lord God, to serve you. Give us that desire, God, to just, God, chase after you on a daily basis, Lord God. Arrest our spirits, Lord God. Consume us, Lord God. Give us a love for you, Lord Jesus. God, God, cause us to be a voice, God, that will shout your goodness, that will tell of your testimony, Lord God. Help us to be a witness, God. Give us the soul winner's heart, Lord. In the name of Jesus.